Travis Scott is the Houston-based rapper that got his big break in the industry in 2012 when he signed on with both Epic Records and Kanye West's Good Music record label. With West as a mentor, there was no way to go but up. So that's exactly what Travis did. Even with those deals, his first project, Al Farrell, was self-released in 2013. His debut studio album, Rodeo, was released through TI's label, Grand Hustle. Clearly, there were plenty of people willing to help Travis succeed, and he had a ton of musical resources at his fingertips. The Travis Astroworld album from 2018 is his best work to date, and has helped him snag tons of nominations and awards for that year. He's currently working on his fourth studio album due for a 2021 release. He started teasing the project in the summer of 2020 in puzzling Instagram posts, and in October, he confirmed the name of the album, Utopia. Fans can look forward to features from M.I.A., Roddy Rich, Future, and Young Thug, and two solid singles that have already been released and topped the Billboard charts, Highest in the Room and Franchise. Travis Scott is doing alright for himself now, and he seems to be very careful in choosing who he works with and how he releases music. But was he always this careful? Or did the rapper have to overcome some criminal tendencies? Right now, we'll have a look at the criminal history of Travis Scott. As far as current rappers in the industry go, Travis Scott had a bit of a head start when it came to having the resources to make it in music. He was raised in a middle class suburban neighborhood on the south side of Houston called Missouri City. His parents were married, stayed that way, and set an excellent example of hard work and financial intelligence. After he graduated from high school, he attended college at the University of Texas in San Antonio. His parents were not happy when he dropped out after two years to seek a music career though, and they stopped supporting him financially. Even still, they didn't disown him or anything, and he apparently had enough money to survive without getting into drug dealing or anything like that. He ended up in New York City to start his music career, but didn't have any luck. After bouncing to Los Angeles, back home to Houston, and back to LA again, he finally found a relatively steady home on a friend's couch. He was staying there when he started writing songs and putting them online. It wasn't long before they made their way to Kanye West and T.I., both rappers that signed him to their labels. Travis's work ethic and natural talent made joining the industry easy, but it would be harder for him to stay out of trouble once he got in it. It wasn't until he was already pretty famous that he caught his first arrest. If you've kept up with other rappers' criminal records, you'll probably notice some patterns. It might be getting caught with weapons over and over or catching several drug charges. Travis's vice and the reason for most of his legal trouble is simple. He just likes to have a good time. The first instance of Travis getting into trouble for turning things up was in 2015. At that point, he had already signed several record deals and was popular with hip-hop fans. His excitement and passion for putting on a good show and getting people just excited were well known, and he knew just how to get the crowds going. Too well, in fact. In August 2015, the rapper was set to perform at Lollapalooza in Chicago. He had just gotten on stage and saw that the crowd wasn't as excited as he liked them to be. Before he even really started a song, he was encouraging festival goers to hop the security barricade and jump on stage. He welcomed them up, but the security people were not happy about it. They told everyone to stay back, which kind of pissed Travis off. He responded by shouting, middle finger up to security right now. Then he got the whole crowd chanting, we want rage. Travis got what he wanted, and dozens of fans ended up on stage. But as soon as they got there, Travis's music was turned off, and he was told that the show was going to end right there if he didn't straighten things out. The rapper realized it was serious and told fans, listen, they're gonna stop the show if y'all don't get down. I wanna finish performing. We can start over. Everybody just get down. Get down the phone, fans didn't listen fast enough and the concert was shut down. Travis had to leave before he even got through five minutes of his set. He fled the stage and was taken into police custody and charged with disorderly conduct. In December, Travis pleaded guilty to the charge. The judge ruled that he must be under court supervision for one year. A few days later, Travis posted on Instagram with the caption, Love to you fans. Thank you Lollapalooza. Learned a lot from this. And for a couple years, it did seem like Travis had learned a lot from that performance. But just a couple of years later, he found himself in the same kind of situation. You'd think that the disappointment of not being able to perform for fans would change Travis's mind about getting the crowd to rush the stage or chant at security, but this seems to be his weakness. In May of 2017, Travis was playing a gig at the Walmart Arkansas Music Pavilion in Rogers, Arkansas. Again, when Travis was up on stage, he didn't think the vibe was where it needed to be, so he encouraged the audience to rush the stage and hop over security. Now, before I go to this next song, I'm gonna invite just a couple more people down here to rage with these motherfuckers right here. Now, I don't know. I don't know if you're scared. 
don't know if you're nervous. I don't know what it is. But if you want to get in this pit, this is your last chance right now. According to a representative from the Rogers Police Department, during the rush to the stage, several people were injured, including an employee from the security company hired to help monitor and control the crowd and a member of the police department. The injured people were taken away to the hospital for treatment, but there were no life-threatening problems. Again, Travis was asked to leave and the show was shut down. He was arrested by authorities and this time he was charged not only with disorderly conduct, but also inciting a riot and endangering the welfare of a minor. Travis's lawyer think they overcharged him and that the video evidence didn't show any kind of riot going on. Still, Travis pleaded guilty, probably because it would be easier than going to court over the whole thing. And luckily for him, his sentencing was light and required no time behind bars. He had to pay several fines though. He paid nearly $7,000 to two of the injured parties, including the sheriff's deputy working security that night. Another $640 went to court costs, and that's it. And that's good because clearly, Travis has the best intentions. His lawyer also said, Scott felt bad about anyone being injured and was always willing to pay the restitution. With as much money as he has, he'd hardly miss it. But it's good that he wasn't trying to fight the charges when he knows he did do a little wrong. He did come out on Twitter later to remind people that, I'm here to cause a good time, not harm. He stuck to that promise for another couple of years, keeping his fans in check at shows and still making sure everyone was having a good time. But when his collaboration with McDonald's was released to the public, he couldn't hold back his energy and enthusiasm anymore. The deal with Mickey D's meant a customized meal, Travis's standard order that he's been eating since he was a kid, a quarter pounder with cheese, pickles, onions, bacon, lettuce, ketchup, and mustard, plus fries with barbecue sauce and a Sprite. Plus, there was a Cactus Jack McDonald's merch in the form of chicken nugget pillows, embroidered jackets, and old school lunch boxes. Needless to say, Travis was hyped and wanted all his fans to be just as excited. And they were. To celebrate the burger launch with his fans, he arranged for a low-key visit to a McDonald's location in Downey, California. However, fans found out where he was going to be and flooded the parking lot. This was only in September 2020, so there were still pandemic health regulations and most of the crowd were not wearing masks or social distancing. Police were called because of the loud noise and huge gathering, and before he knew it, Travis had a couple of citations in his hand. One for failing to obtain an event permit for a crowd of more than 200 people, and another for failing to get a permit to film. If you think these charges sound a bit crazy, you aren't alone. It's likely that Travis wasn't planning on there being that many people there to just be in a crowd. He probably imagined more of a cameo type appearance at the location. He's not necessarily in control of who shows up where, so it's a bit harsh that he got in trouble for that. He's also filming on his cell phone, the way everyone does literally everywhere. In any case, the citations were only $100 each, and 200 bucks is definitely not going to hurt his bottom line. The McDonald's restaurant itself also received the same citations and had to fork over $200 as well. That's about 33 Travis Scott meals. As far as Travis' real legal issues and criminal history goes, that's pretty much it. Three times that he got overexcited and wanted his fans to have as good a time as he was. We're happy to hear that Travis Scott doesn't have an extensive criminal record to deal with for the rest of his life, and we hope that he keeps it that way so he can keep bringing great music to fans. 